elected president of your day? Yes. Yeah, that's what Clinton said. Clinton's going to be here. We're going to all have to leave. And uh, there, there's a lot of on that. Now, did you hear? There's a fellow running around the country saying that this Prince Charlie is the Antichrist. Have you heard that one? Yeah. Yeah. You haven't heard that? Yeah. Uh, Who's Prince, Prince Charlie? Charlie? The, uh, Charles? Uh, Charles, the Charles, the pretender to the throne. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he is a pretender, that's true. He I don't know why you do that. Pretender. Pretender. He is the pretender to the throne. Uh, why is this? Why? Well, why? Why is he the pretender? It's the standard way of describing him. He's a pretender to the throne. He will be getting the throne. He doesn't have the throne, but he is being tutored. Can I use the word tutored? Tutored so that he will have the throne. And right now he's pretending to have the throne in that he learns. Oh, all right, let's do it this way. It says in the Bible that Saul, when he was anointed to be the king, said, I don't know how to go out or come in the door. Do you remember that story? Yes. I can't go out or in. Saul said, I don't know how to be a king. When a king goes in and out of a door, he does it differently than the rest of us. You know what I mean? Yes. Now, I was trained. My mother trained me. She said, now, a gentleman will always open the door for a lady. That's what my mother taught me. And I opened the door for ladies. I, I, I don't open the door for men. But I opened the door for ladies and gentlemen. I try to be a cultured gentleman. You know what I'm saying. But a king doesn't open the door. He starts with that door. And I'll tell you, he's got to, uh, what do they call the... the uh, well, the butler is... There's another word. And, and, and that man heads for that door. You know what I'm saying? And he's got to have the door open by the time the king gets there. And, and Saul said, I don't know even know how to open the door. I don't know how to be a king, he said. Later on, David said, I have learned to be a king. The Bible says that David watched Saul, and he learned <laughs> how to walk, walk up to the door, and somebody else opened it for him. Are, are you following that kind of thinking? Yeah. It, it takes a little... You're not a normal person when you're a king. Charlie is a pretender to the throne because he's learning. He's becoming, he's learning to not open the car door. Okay. When you're a king, you don't open the car door. I, I went to uh, Las Vegas. No, this time I was in Reno, Reno, Nevada. The car went up to the Golden Nugget. Now, the Golden Nugget is the largest casino in the United States. It was, was at one time, the largest casino in the United States. And uh, I was in the, not the driver's seat, but the seat next to the driver's the side seat there. And I started to open the door, and he said, don't do that. Pull my hand back, you know. Well, they opened the door for me. The doorman at the largest casino in the United States opened the door. And then he put his hand in like that and he said, Praise the Lord, Brother Ewald. Oh, Did you hear what I said? <laughs> and he treated me like a king, but I was also his brother. And I walked out and he said, Did you see our sign? I looked up and there, across for one block long, in those flashing lights, it said, David Ebaugh teaches revelation in the ballroom. And they treated me like a king. I was in charge of the Golden Nugget that night. I mean, my name could have been, uh, what's that guy that just died? Uh, Frank Sinatra. Sinatra or any of the other guys. They couldn't have retreated them any better than they treated me. Do you understand this now? I was at the top. Well, I looked at my name and likes like that, and I said, oh, it sure is hard to be humble. <laughs> it's hard to be humble when you see your name up there across the marquee that's a block long. You know what I'm saying. Of course it 
I never ever thought that my name would be there. And I am also very sorry that they didn't take a picture because they won't put it up again. <laughs> but they treated me like a king. I walked into that ballroom and something that I'd never had, it didn't work on me like that before, never before. There was a, I would have to say, a regal, could I word, use the word splendor? A regal splendor that took over me. And I walked into the ballroom with my satchel, or my teaching satchel, like this, you see. It was leather. Had it down like this. And as I walked into that uh, gambling casino, in order to get to the ballroom, the first thing you'd go through are all the machines, you know, the, what are they calling them? Slots. And when I walked in, just like this, now I was a little taller than I usually am because the guy opened the door. I don't know where you know. I walked, I walked a little taller. And I walked in like this. I walked in like I was king. And I looked around, and all that noise of those slot machines operating stopped. And there was silence as I walked in there. And as I walked toward that ballroom, I know that there were a thousand pairs of eyes that had turned from those slots to me. I don't know if it was the Holy Ghost I don't know if it was a regal bearing. I don't know what it was, but I had control of every person. Did you hear me? Amen. I had control of every act. It only lasted for me about, I would say, 15 to 20 seconds while I walked, in, walked through that. Then after I made my turn, the slots all started going again. Now, I'm not sure what that was, but I liked it. It was the Holy Spirit. I like it. It was God walking it, through the door. It, 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 there was a king that arrived. Amen. There was somebody who knew that he was, a, if he wasn't a king, he was a servant of the king. He was an ambassador. You know what I'm saying? And he arrived, and, and he arrived with a regal splendor that took control of spirits. Amen. The, the, the spirit, my spirit was in control. That's all you can say. They couldn't work those machines until I had gone through that place and into the ballroom and then I taught some of the lessons I'll be teaching uh, today and, and tomorrow. When that happens to you, it gives you a feeling that you're right. You're right. Most people know that anybody who studies the Bible and starts their own Bible school a lot of people says you're wrong. How many have heard that Ebal is wrong about the rapture? How many have heard that? Let me see your hand. Well, there ought to be 100% of the hands on that. Well, let me explain something. I'm convinced I'm right, even more. Even more now, I'm convinced that I'm right. It was a lonely, lonely walk 30 years ago. I thought I was a voice crying in the wilderness 30 years ago. Now, you can go to any Christian bookstore and get a raft of books saying what I said 30 years ago. Come on, you know what I'm saying. Right. The, 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 the shelves are full uh, of people saying, yeah, that's the way it is, and the rapture was a theory, now this is the way it is. You know what I'm saying. So it feels good. It feels good to be right. But I also realize that there are enemies, and there are people that don't agree with us, and I want Clint to come back here now and tell that part of his testimony. Clint? Do I get to testify after my husband? I'm his wife. Well, I know that, Joan, and I'm going to give you a chance. You're going to have oh, your good. chance. But Clint, I need him right now. Okay. Clint, do you mind? Come up here and tell them what happened to your preacher when you were telling him some of these things, and then what happened and how God has a way of making things change. Do you hear me? Yes, I hear you. 
We don't have to walk the way we used to walk. We can walk in victory even though at a time we were having a fight, a war. Now when I went through boot camp, they taught me how to walk and how to dodge and how to keep away from the enemy. Not walk like a king, but walk like a, what's that, uh, where are you Sam? Walk like a ninja. Continue this, this, this uh, basic thought for just a minute. Ed, do you remember years and years ago when we used to go to full gospel businessmen? And uh, back in those days, you were the president, I believe. Uh -huh. I was president in Harrisburg, you were the president. And back in those days, the full gospel businessmen were wide open to us and the message. Then one thing led to another, and we started to see the door start. What, what was happening to the door, huh? Yeah, it closed up. And, you know, Ed, the door's opening again. Couldn't stay closed forever. And now I'm getting invitations to go back to full gospel business then. What have you been telling for the last 30 years they want to know? Well, they wouldn't let me tell it in their place. But now they want to know. Why they want to know? Because they're hearing about it from other places. See what I'm talking about? Yes. And so the doors are opening again. Now I found out that I am a, one of the America's most prominent Bible teachers. <laughs> Well, there is a reason for that. Yes, the truth. And it's changing. You follow, that? You follow me? It is changing. It, it, there comes a time when you have to fight a war. It is a war. And you're either going to win it or lose it. And it does appear that we're on the winning course. Yes. We're, 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 we're headed toward... And a fella called me. I, was, I forget just what town I was in, but the, the local people called and they wanted to call person to person to me in this uh, hotel where I was staying because they wanted to give me a message about something in the meeting. And an operator told that man, said, you can't, you can't call Reverend Debaugh person to person. He said, why can't I call him person to person? She said, he's in our list of famous personalities. <laughs> Amen. Well, you can't make a you can't make a person to person call to to Bill Clinton. You can't make a person to person call to uh, help me out. Uh, you can't call the president of the United States. Hillary Clinton. Billy <laughs> person to person. There's a list that the phone operators have that you, these are these are famous personalities. <laughs> Reverend Ebo's on this list. Praise the Lord. Well, I tell you that like I said, it's hard to be humble. <laughs> to find out that you, you know, I can remember the day when it was who is David Ebo? Now, after many years of this television station and that radio station and this, this monarch here and that preacher there, and what I found out is the monarch has probably done more to make the change than any particular thing that I've done, except maybe this new book on names of God, because that names of God book has just, like, like, it's like an arrow piercing and has gone into just everywhere and the theologians are now at the stage of the arguments, you know, they're, they're starting to come up. Well, when they argue, they, they argue on the basis of the name of the author, you know what I'm saying? Ebal's idea, you know, right. so, so your name gets over and over again. Then I found out one other thing, and I have to share it with you. You see, I'm 68 years old now. Now, here's something that you, I didn't realize. I am now no threat to any minister. I'm 68 years old. Their board is not going to send for me to take over his job. Are you following this? See, I'm an elder now. And as I, I, I've been introduced to some of the big, big conventions, this is Elder Brother Ebal. 
I am their elder in this group, even though I'm not a member of their group, I am a Bible student who is their elder.